Well, welcome everyone. How is everyone doing this morning? <laughs> good. I'm excited to be here with you. And I want you to feel good about what you're going to hear today. Because what you're going to hear has helped some companies literally save hundreds of thousands of dollars in lost profits and revenue. And to some of you, it could mean millions of dollars in lost profits and revenue. Now today's topic, five costly mistake leaders make that kill profitability. And I want to take that a step further. We're going to talk about how you can lower your operating costs and your current insurance costs. And we do that by teaching easy risk management strategies and systems that just flat out work so that you can be more competitive in your marketplace. Now those are the messages and purpose of my presentation today. And I believe in teaching people how to insulate their companies from risk and losses that cause their money to go up in flames. And I want, to I want to share with you some tips, tools, and insights with you that you can take back with you to the office today and, and, and use in the weeks and months to come. Now, does everyone have a pen that's working? We're going to be covering a lot of great information today that you will not want to miss out on. If you need one, I've got some extra ones up here. Does anyone need a pen? Now, I don't know about you all, but when I would go to a conference and listen to a speaker, I always tried to come away feeling like if I could come away with one good takeaway from what they had to say, I felt like my time was productive. And it's my sincerest hope that each of you will come away today with at least one good takeaway, hopefully several good takeaways. But I want to keep today interactive. I want to ask you some questions along the way and would simply like you to play along. Obviously, the more you put into something, the more you'll get out of it. All right, let's get directly into the heart and meat of our program and say that in a study that was done by the National Federation of Business, they said that this was done back in December 2017. They said that of the top 10 issues facing and concerning businesses today, three of the top vote getters were number one people's concern for staffing and turnover. Finding and keeping employees is absolutely critical to you, and you all know that. And the cost of not having an engaged workforce is huge to your bottom line and to your top line. Next is government regulations, like OSHA and ADA. Everyone knows that keeping up with government regulations, keeping up with compliance, oh my gosh, it feels like you're trying to outrun a freight train, right? And last but not least is health care, medical care, and the cost of workers' compensation. It's extremely costly to your companies. Quite frankly, it's probably the second biggest expense closest to payroll, right? But today we're going to be, we're going to be spending the lion's share of our time talking about something that I feel is an absolute, uh, it, it's an icon of business today. It's just part of what business is about. It's workers' comp, workers' comp administration. But we're also going to be peppering into this conversation the synergy that exists between workers' comp and health care because clearly there's a connection between both. Now, how many of you remember the old tongue-in-cheek commercial, Happy Cows Make Happy Cheese, the Wisconsin cows? Anyone remember that? <laughs> well, I'm here to say that happy and healthy employees are clearly more productive employees, and obviously statistically have less claims and lawsuits. But a little bit about me. First, I have to tell you, I've got a confession to make. I am a recovering insurance professional. Uh, in all seriousness, I've been in the insurance industry for 35 years now as a claims adjuster, in loss control, and as a consultative broker, all of which has given me an excellent technical foundation for the brokerage and consulting work that I do today. And six years ago, I was teaching a class called Keys for Profitability in the New Economy. And in that, I was teaching cost containment strategies to CEOs and CFOs of middle market companies. Uh, to help make them, to help lower their operating costs and their insurance costs. And because of the success that people were having with what I was teaching over time, I had a number of people come up to me over time and say pretty much, hey Rick, you ought to write a book on this stuff. So I did. I'm the author of this book, Accidents Waiting to Happen. It's a book on best practices in workers' comp administration and protecting corporate profitability. And I'm proud to say it became a bestseller in the first two weeks of distribution. Even more proud to say it went to number one on Amazon. Now I say that not to impress you, but to impress upon you that I have an absolute passion for how I see my work. A passion that comes from not only my work, but actually came out of an experience I had with one of my clients coming out of the recession. And I want to share part of that story with you. Now I don't know about each of you, but I hated going through the recession on many levels, professionally, personally, 
But professionally, I saw many of my clients who became good friends of mine really struggle to keep their doors open. I saw many of them have to let go of employees who were like family to them just to survive. Now, obviously, everyone was in survival mode. But this one particular client of mine, they were really struggling to try to find and keep good employees. They were overwhelmed with government regulations. And at insult to injury, they were frustrated by workers' compensation claims. To be exact, they were averaging over $318,000 in losses, some involving lawsuits. Now, this company was doing their level best to be successful. They were interviewing, they were working with some trusted advisors, and they were getting good advice from some. Others, not so much. They weren't very helpful. They weren't very proactive. And certain parts of their business was suffering. In the area of risk management, they were bleeding arterially and asked for my help. Now, I witnessed the CEO. He was really a good guy. He was really concerned about how they were going to get through this. But a year went by, and he trusted the process of trying to understand the root causes of his claims. He did a risk assessment. He assembled a team to be a part of that process. He implemented some new and simple ways of how they were doing certain things. And in one year, he had his claims plummet from averaging over $318,000 to less than $28,000 in just one year. Now, for a company that was averaging or sporting a 5% profit margin at the time, that had the same financial impact as adding over $13 million to their sales. Their profitability up 24% that year. You talk an absolute game changer for them. Absolute game changer. Now seeing the success that they had, seeing the, seeing the success that the employees were going through, having them feel invigorated in this process, that indelibly burned in my heart my new mission. That my goal from then on was to find a way that we could systemize and organize the work that we had done together. And we did just that. Now, can each of you remember a time when you gave someone a gift and they absolutely loved that gift? Felt pretty awesome, didn't it? That's exactly how I felt. And I want to know, those who were interested in best practices, I was willing to teach it. Now, your numbers may not be as large as theirs, but the process is still the same. The process is still the same. And there may be some of you who, who might be saying, I've not had any claims. Well, there'd be, some, there'd be a lot of people who would tell you, it's not a matter of if you're going to have some claims, it's when you're going to have some claims. So be prepared. And I was talking with a friend, he was laughing, saying, I haven't had any claims in a long time. But he went on to say, I don't know if I'm that good or if I've just been lucky. Now today, what you're going to learn is the financial impact of loss, just how expensive, just how caustic a claim can be to your companies. Next, we're going to talk about the five costly mistakes that, that kill profitability. And lastly, we're going to talk about how you can lower your operating costs and your, and your current insurance costs. And some of you here may not be the decision makers on your insurance program. If you're not, I would highly recommend or suggest you can take that information back to those in the company that are. Now, who feels like the cards are stacked against you when it comes to dealing with the large insurance companies and the labor law attorneys and the workers' comp attorneys? Yeah. Well, I want you to leave here today with a little bit of hope that you have a little bit more control and know how you can gain more control over a system, a workers' comp system that maybe you felt controlled by. And at the end of our program together, I'm going to go ahead and offer you the opportunity to take a risk assessment to find out where your operational strengths are, more importantly, where your operational blind spots are, the ones that are costing you money. And you can use that same risk assessment to help lower your insurance costs. How many would like that idea? Okay. Well, let's get right into this and talk about the financial impact that claims can have on your companies. Let me tell you the true story about Dave and Sandy. Dave had a business down in Fort Myers, South Florida. As he told me the story, he was just getting in from a great weekend at the beach, it was about nine o'clock. To get to his office, he had to walk down a hallway and he had to walk by his assistant, uh, Sandy. And Sandy had that look. Ever had one of your employees give you that look? That look of frustration, that look of despair? Well, Dave knew something was up, but he walks down and he, knows he, needs, he needs to greet Sandy. He says, hey, good morning. What's the matter? 
Well, Sandy proceeded to say, Dave, I've got some bad news, and I've got some worse news. What would you like first? Well, you got to know Dave. Dave's a bottom line kind of guy, kind of rolls his eyes and just, just, just tell me. Well, Sandy proceeded to say, remember the guy that we hired a couple weeks ago, George? Well, you knew he had a worker's comp claim, right? Well, they just found out this morning he's suing us. He's get an attorney. Well, as soon as Dave heard that, his stomach went into a knot. Because this isn't the first time this has happened to Dave. And he's thinking to himself, that's just great. Here we go again. Someone taking advantage of us, taking advantage of the system. So let me share with you a little about the chemistry of the situation. Dave had just hired on two new, uh, 20 new people in one month to build out a job he'd just been awarded. And in the first two weeks of hire, one of his employees, George, goes out and has a serious worker's comp claim. But what he learned after the fact was that George has had a history of going out and having claims and getting an attorney. Now this claim ran about $67,000. And based on Dave's profit margin, which was 5% at the time, he's now got to sell over $1.3 million just to break even, just to pay for that claim. That's big money. I'm gonna share with you how we come up with that number here in just a moment. So let's talk about the five costly mistake leaders make that kill profitability. The first one is not knowing your numbers, your KPIs, your key performance indicators. Do you know your incident rates or your OSHA DART rates? Do you know your experience modification? What about your loss ratios? What about your incurred losses? And as a refresher for many of you, it incur losses, what you see on your carrier loss runs. And it's a combination of what the company has paid for a claim plus what they think they're going to pay for a claim, called a reserve. And that combination is called an incur loss. Do you know what yours are? Now, many of you are familiar with the great management mind, Tom Peters. But Tom apparently had coined the phrase, what gets measured gets done. And I'm here to say that you can't manage what you don't control. And you can't control what you don't measure. Bottom line, you know your analytics. Everything is about big data these days. It's critically important that you get data that, has, that can give you actionable data that you can actually use and understand where your trends are. Do you know the time of day or day of week that your losses are occurring? Do you know the type of body part that consistently gets injured, the types of injury that you're having? I find that sometimes nine out of 10 leaders never really keep up with this, and it's important if you want to get started. So let's talk about the second costly mistake leaders make, not knowing the real cost of claims. And we talk about the real cost of claims, we're talking about not only the direct cost of those claims, but the indirect cost of those claims as well. And that picture of an iceberg is a great depiction of really what we're talking about here. Because most every time the actual physical cost of a claim pales in comparison to the indirect cost that those claims have on your company. So let me explain this a little bit further. Who here has heard, let me see a show of hands, of the, of the terminology total cost of risk? Who's heard of it? Total cost of risk. Good. It's been around for a long time. It's been around since 1974. It was created by a guy by the name of Frank E. Bird Jr. And Frank had a publication called The Real Cost of Accidents Can Be Measured and Controlled. Now I'd like everyone just to stop and I want you to think about how much your company pays in premiums right now and put that number in your head. Or how much do you think your company is paying in premiums? Put that number in your head. Talking everything. Your property, liability, workers' comp, health care. It's probably a big number. But let's say it's $100,000. What the science of t -Corps says, if your premium was $100,000, your total cost of risk is conservatively over a million dollars. Which means your bigger cost to your companies isn't what you pay in premiums. It's what's below the waterline. How much did your last bad hire just cost you? Think about it. Who's had someone working with you for five, six, seven months and they left your company? It's happened to me. Sherm, 
Society of HR Managers, you all are well aware of, they put a publication out several years ago saying if you've got someone making $30,000, $35,000 a year, and they're with you for six months and they go, that employee costs you upwards of seventy, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000. Extremely expensive. The cost to rehire, the cost to retrain, the loss of production, your involvement, attorney involvement. It's extremely costly to your companies. Extremely costly to your company. So what's the moral of the story here? The moral of the story here is you want to find resources. When you think about your risk management program, think beyond just getting quotes. Think beyond that. Look for resources that you can actually have and use that can help you lower your operational costs. So let me direct your attention. Let me share some with you that comes out of OSHA called indirect loss cost factors. Again, indirect loss cost factors. What OSHA says is for any claim that you have, there are some very real additional costs associated with them. And as you can see, they've got factors there that range anywhere from 1.1 to 4.5. So a $10,000 claim turns into $20,000 really actually pretty quickly. Now if everyone would, pull out your cell phone if you would. Pull out your cell phone and put it in calculator mode. I want to take you through a quick, brief, simple math problem, but let me know when you're there. Now, I told you I was going to take you back to the example that we talked about with Dave. I told you that Dave had a claim, and that number I want you to put in your calculator is 67,488. That was the number that we just talked about in Dave's situation. Now, I want you to multiply that times the lowest Multiply that times 1.1. That was the lowest factor that we had from before. And what do you come up with? Who's got it? 74,236. Now keep that number in your phone. That's the cost of your indirect costs. Now add back to that number, add in 67,488. And what do you come up with? 141, 725. Wow, that's a big number. And that's just the cost of just really one workers' compensation claim. Now, I told you we were going to pepper into this conversation the synergy that exists between workers' comp and health care. So let me share with you a study that came out of Duke University back in 2012. 12,000 people were involved in this study. It was done by the Medical Center of Analysis on Overweight Folks. And their analysis showed that those who were overweight filed two times the number of cases than their non-overweight counterparts did. The medical costs for those folks were seven times higher. And why is that? Some of you are probably familiar with the terminology of comorbidity. If we've got, we've got some of our employees who have several serious health situations or overweight, they've got diabetes. I've got a friend right now who's got to wait two months before they have surgery, needed surgery, before they can start that. That's why costs are more expensive. And last but not least, they show that they had 13 times more days off from work. So what's the moral of the story here? Do risk assessments on the health of your people. Get them healthy. Get them into wellness programs. And wellness programs of today are so very different than they were even a couple years ago. Now, I promised you I would share with you a tool. Feel free to write this tool down. This comes from the Department of Labor. And this is a great site because you can actually go online and actually get better explanations to operational soft costs for your company, but it has a great calculator tool in it. And what I would suggest is that when you get back to the office, either yourself or have one of your staff, get your loss runs and take your loss runs through the formula. I think you'll find it'll be a very eye-opening experience. All right, let me tell you about the story about Mario. Mario was a company up in north, northeast Florida, up in, up, in, up in Jacksonville, and he had eight claims in one year, totaling over $87,000. He paid his $12,000 in deductible, and the carrier paid the rest. What Mario figured out is that he had over $93,000 in additional soft costs for a total of $180,000 in total loss costs. Big numbers. Now again, this is what was interesting. 
Mario really wanted to understand the impact that his claims were having on his company. So he took the time to figure this out. And it took him about three or four months, he told me, to, to, to do this. And this is his math. And as you look down that list, all those items on that list are going to make sense to you. Very common sense stuff. He had cleanup costs, loss of production. And he got off real easy in the, in the legal department. Because we generally see fifteen dollars and $20,000 for legal fees with things like this. Fortunately, he only had, what, $10,400 in legal fees. And two of, the, uh, two of the four employees that were involved in the accidents, one he fired, one quit. So $6,852 so 6, in training costs, that was all just money up in smoke. Mario ended up having one of those V8 moments, <laughs> looked after the fact. He said, you know what, if I, had, if I had done a little bit of training, those losses really it probably wouldn't have happened and it would have saved my company a ton of money in the process, as he said. Now, I want to, I want to shift gears now and I want to talk about the impact that your claims have on your top line, on your sales. And the calculation is really simple here. The first thing you've got to know as a company is what is your net profit margin as a company? And again, the math is really simple. You take 7% and divide that into your total loss costs. In this example here, if you had your calculators out, that number turns out to $2,582,000. That's a lot of sales that have to be impacted and done just to break even. Big money. So let me put this in your world. How much, how much work do you have to do to get $180,000 in profits? How many contracts do you have to sign and win? And what percentage rates in order for you to be able to make $180,000 in lost profits. Let's keep that in mind. All right, let's talk about the third costly mistake leaders make. Not knowing their blind spots. Their operational blind spots. There you are in your red car going down the road of business, and that yellow car represents a lawsuit that you did not see coming. It represents a heart attack one of your employees that they had that they did not see coming. That blue car represents a worker's comp claim that you know you have on the books. It's starting to get old and very expensive. It's starting to grow hair on it, as we call it. Now, all of you are familiar with the, the Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule, right? But have you heard of the 90-10 rule? The 90-10 rule says that 10% of your employees right now are going to cost you 90% of your increases in health care. So again, what's the moral of the story there? Have risk assessments done, not only in workers' comp, but on health care. Know where your blind spots are. And at the end of our time together, for those of you that are, that are interested, I'd be more than happy to make one available to you at no cost. It's my give back to those that, uh, that, that came today. But if I can get you to remember just two things from today, I'd like you to remember this. Number one, if you reduce your business risk as a company, you can and will increase your profitability as a company. But number two, know your blind spots. Know your blind spots. Number one New York best-selling authors Larry Bossidy and Ram Charan have a book called Execution. And in their book, they make the observation that too many business leaders today fool themselves into thinking that their businesses are well run. Many of you have heard the concept that sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And I'm going to share the story about Tom and Andrew with you. Tom was a successful distributorship business. And his litmus test of hiring seemed like if you could fog a mirror, you could come on through the doors. It wasn't literally like that, but that's what it seemed like. Because once you hire somebody and put them in your canoe of business, it's like someone reaches in to the canoe and takes that paddle out of your hand and you become an unguided canoe going down the river towards the waterfall. Because if you have a claim on day one or day two, or hour one or hour two, your company's on it, you're paying for that claim. Andrew, a 32-year-old young man, had back surgery three months before he was hired. None of this information came out of the interview process. So what do you think happened in the first three weeks of Andrew's hire, where he injures his back. 
Andrew's claim ran about $76,000. And based on Tom's profit margin, he now had to sell over $2 million just to break even for that. Again, huge, big money. So let me ask you this question. Have you ever hired someone today and put them on the job the next day? Well, the answer should be, no, we haven't, no, we won't. Because <laughs> remember that conditional offer of employment letter we just talked about? That's an extremely important document. Because if someone is less than honest in completing that medical health questionnaire, you have just given yourself a get out of jail free card. How was that? Through a court case called Martin Company versus Carpenter. If someone is less than honest in completing that medical health questionnaire, you now have, your carrier now has the legal right to deny that worker's compensation claim. Again, saving your company a lot of money in that process. A lot of money. Now I know in, in my book I write the fact that there are many people in the HR space who are concerned about this because it concerns with ADA. But having done this for a long time and looked at the proponents of the evidence and the number of attorneys involved in this issue, more would be glad that you had it than not. If done the right way, it's a very extremely effective tool. All right, let's talk about some other blind spots. I'm assuming many of you are doing pre-employment background checks. Are you doing the right ones? Is the question. Dave wished he had done his, and so do I. Had Dave had done it, he would have realized that George had a rap sheet probably two, two pages long. But I put some great resources up there for you. That second resource comes from the Judges of Compensation Claims. You can actually go online and you can see if the person that you're hiring has had legal representation before. It won't be the only, won't be the only filter that you use. It's just another arrow in your quiver that you might want to be able to keep track of. The other resource at the bottom comes from the Florida Department of State and mugshots.com. Again, you can go online and you can check to see if the people that you're fixing to hire have got any civil or criminal background issues. Might, you might want to know that. I'm sure you would too as well. Let's talk about some other blind spots. Are you doing motor vehicle checks on all your employees that drive your vehicles? Please do that. Why? Because of a legal terminology called negligent entrustment. If you entrust your employees with your company vehicles or their personal car on company time, and they have a serious automobile accident, and their license has been suspended or revoked, the legal community, they'll do an absolute tap dance on your head. They will eat your lunch. Let me rephrase that. They'll eat you for lunch. Make sure you're having them done. It shouldn't cost you anything. If you're being charged, come and see me. The next is character assessments. And when I talk about character assessments, many times people are thinking about personality profiling. And I will say they are a very effective tool to use. And I have clients that do that. But I'm actually talking about something that has become very popular in the last seven years called integrity testing. And it's become very popular because it's pretty scary accurate in ferreting out those people who suffer from a condition called cognitive dissonance. What in the world is that? That's when people's unproductive behaviors are not in alignment with whatever is deep in their subconscious mind, their head. It comes out. It's looking for their propensity for drug use. It looks at their issues with theft. It even has a hostility quotient in it. It can even test to see if they're trying to beat the test or not. Again, something to think about. Let's talk about some other blind spots. How many of you are using dock in the boxes or emergency rooms of hospitals as your first, uh, as your first defense, medical defense situation? Who's using that when your employees get injured? Didn't see any hands go up, that's a good thing. I would be the first to say there's some very good doctors at dock in the boxes or ERs. But I'm here to advocate to you that you want to consider using occupational physicians. And why is that? Because OCDOCs, for short, they're more known and have more of a propensity to get your people back to work. We witnessed during the recession, and we still see it today, where there's some doctors who look for a gravy train of annuitized income from you and your insurance company by having your employees come back and back and back for medical care. 
Shouldn't be that way. Occupational medical facilities are more in line with getting your people back to work. Which then cascades me into another important topic. How really robust can you tell yourself is your return to work program? It's huge. It's an absolute huge cost driver to the cost of your work comp program and to your company. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you're spending 50, 100, a half a million dollars on your workers' comp insurance as a company. Let's say tomorrow you have a $5,000 claim. How much do you think that claim is going to cost your company? Some people say, well, gosh, probably cost $5,000. Well, no, I've got an insurance company paying my claim. We're paying, I'm spending $100,000 in premiums. No, you're going to spend the $100,000 in premiums and you're going to pay the $5,000 back. And you're thinking, how is that? Because of an issue called an experience modification. You end up paying your claims back, everyone. Workers' comp's not insurance. It's almost like a, a funding mechanism for claims. But let me spice this up a little bit. There is a one-to-one -one ratio in Florida right now that a $5,000 claim of just medical bills, it's going to cost your company $5,000 over a three-year period of time. But this is where it gets really nasty. The second your company, your insurance company pays one dime of lost wages, you have effectively quadrupled the cost of that claim for your company. Did y'all know that? A $5,000 claim literally will cost your company 20 grand, four times the cost of that claim once they pay lost wages. That's why return to work is so critically, is so critically important. All right, let's talk about the fourth costly mistake leaders make. Not having systems and structure when it comes to your risk management program. Now, if you're ever looking for an excellent business book that could actually even potentially change your life, I'd highly recommend that you get Marshall Goldsmith's book called Triggers. Marshall was voted the number one rated CEO coach of Fortune 500 companies three years in a row. And Marshall said in his book, we do not get better without structure. And he was the CEO coach for then the CEO of Ford, Alan Mulally. And back in 2014, Fortune Magazine rated Alan Mulally as the third greatest leader in the world. And Alan Mulally had made the comment that structure is imperative at a thriving organization, even more so at a struggling one. He went on to say something else profound. He said, too many executives today are too proud to admit that they need structure. I don't want to use a football analogy here to make a point. I know football season's coming, for those of you who are football fans, but when a football coach aligns his team on the field to play each year, or for each, for each play, everyone needs to know where to go when the ball gets hiked, right? Well, the same holds true in the real world that risk management is not something just to be delegated to HR or to the safety guy. It involves everyone up and down the corporate chain. It should involve the CEO, the COO, the CFO, and the folks that you would see on that right-hand side of the page, your claims handlers, your HR folks, y'all, the office managers, all of these people should be involved in this process. All right, I asked Earl if you had pens. We're going to start getting into high gear now. Make sure your pens are working, because I want to share with you a step-by-step -step system of how you can lower your operating costs and your insurance costs. And to keep this simple, we're going to use an acronym of DIAMOND. Put a picture of a diamond in your head. Or look at your diamond ring. Each letter in the word DIAMOND represents a simple step in this process that's extremely effective. And that first D in DIAMOND, you want, to, you want to determine your blind spots. And you do that by taking a risk assessment. And that risk assessment should be very holistic. It should involve multiple aspects within your company. And I'm gonna keep that simple and we're just gonna call that P4, everyone. Pre-hire, post-offer, pre-claim, post-claim. 
What does your hiring process look like? We've learned that who you put in your canoe makes all the difference in the world in what happens downriver. Absolutely does. What are you doing after you've offered someone a job? In your pre, uh, pre and post claim, what policies and procedures do you have in place before and after you have a claim? Very important, make sure your assessment is very holistic. The I in Diamond. You want to invite multiple leaders to be involved in this process. And why is that? Because you want to get a good picture of really what's going on within your company. I can't tell you how many times I've seen CEOs say, we're doing such and such, when HR looks back and said, no, we're not, you didn't approve it. <laughs> you want the assessment to be with multiple leaders, whoever involves the hiring, whoever involves claims, and leaders within the company. The A in Diamond, you're gonna aggregate everyone's responses to that assessment. Aggregate everyone's responses. M, you're gonna meet and have a, con you're gonna have a discussion about those items. Get everyone on the same page, and this is where the magic really starts to happen, everyone. When I was first doing this, I felt like an absolute rock star because the companies were just getting energized by this process. The O, you're gonna organize checklist, establish accountability. This is when everyone really understands how what they do synergistically meshes into what they're doing in other departments so everyone can start collaborating and working as a team. The N, look at needed policies and procedures. This is where it's customizable. The good assessments usually are fashioned after what Fortune 1000 companies are doing. You can customize and do what you'd like, but do something to get yourself on the right track. That last D in Diamond, I'm gonna share with you a story of a company that saved nearly $50,000 because of that last D. That last D stands for Design a Narrative Summary that articulates what you've put in place. It's huge, absolutely huge. Let me bring that closer to home and, share, and, and, and ask you this. Who here has raised 16-year-olds in your household? Or is gonna raise 16-year-olds in your household? God love us, right? I've had three of my own. Well, remember when your son or daughter turned 16? Or I'll say when your son or daughter turned 16? Remember when they had, if they had a B-plus average and had gone through driver training school, they got a discount or credits off the automobile insurance, right? Well, the same holds true in the corporate world. If you can show that you've got good policies and procedures in place, the underwriters eat that up. They love it. And you're gonna position yourself for better credits. Now, I'd like to share with you a quick case study, share with you a quick email I got from a, from a national company. And in the interest of time, I'm just gonna read two sentences from that, from that email. So based on the insured's prior claims experience, we feel the original quote at a premium of 354,682 would be warranted. Goes on to say, upon your request for reconsideration and reviewing the proactive work your client has enacted, we've revised the renewal program down to 304,967. I'll do the math for you. $49,715, just because they saw what you had put in place. They absolutely loved it. So let's talk about the fifth costly mistake leaders make. Not taking action. Now this may be the easiest and the hardest one of the bunch to talk about because maybe it's just easier to stick with status quo and do nothing. But we've learned how expensive a claim can be to your companies. How many of us have ever waited to put an alarm system in our office or our homes until after we've been robbed. Or put that safety program in until after we've had OSHA give us a fine. Or how many of us have waited to do a risk assessment until after we've had that, that lawsuit issue or a workers comp claim? Well again, it doesn't need to be that way. I find that there are letters, a lot of leaders who are more apt to look at production than they are safety. And think of the analogy this way. It'd be like each of you going out and getting the best efficient energy air conditioning system you could buy, putting it in your home, and then leaving the windows open on a hot summer day. That's what we're talking about. Put these things in place and close the windows. All right, in summary, we've covered a lot of territory today. 
And as I said, if you reduce your business risk as a company, you can and will increase your profitability as a company. And we talked about how, how even one claim can be so very caustic and expensive to your companies. We also talked about the importance of uncovering your blind spots. More importantly, doing something about them. But that all starts by doing a risk assessment. And lastly, we talked about the importance of having systems to simplify. Simplify that process for yourselves. Now, I'd like everyone just to, again, to stop. And I want you to reflect upon what we talked about today, because we've covered a lot of different issues. Is there something that you want to do when you get back to the office? Is there something that you learned today that you want to call or make a call on or do something with? So what are next steps? Whether you decide to do this with me or someone else, I would highly encourage you to please go and have a risk assessment done. And if you're interested, I can share one with you that has been validated by 31 different insurance companies, labor law attorneys and workers' comp attorneys, and what they felt were best practices. Basically, it takes less than 10 minutes to do, and you can see how you would compare with best practices. Now, I could teach this all day long. I love this stuff. But if you are interested, at the end of our program today, I simply just leave a card with me. And if, if you would, put a number on the back of your card. And that number represents the approximate number of employees that are in your company. And either myself or my staff will be glad to go ahead and make sure that you get the right, uh, the right assessment. Now, we all know that accidents are waiting to happen. Let's not have them happen on your watch. <laughs> it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Um, thank you, everyone. When I went into business, I didn't set out to write a number one best-selling book or speak to audiences nationwide or, for that matter, help develop a risk assessment tool respected by my industry. What motivated me was something my dad told me over 30 years ago. He'd say, focus on the people you serve. Stay relevant to their needs and deliver the results most important to them. Well, those simple words have guided me in business, in my community, and in my relationships. Hi, I'm Rick Dalrymple, and I work with company leaders who understand risk can kill their profitability. Risk, it's a, it's a little word with huge implications. And so many people have told me, Rick, I'm afraid we may be out of compliance. Need your help, bud. Or staffing is killing us. How do I find and keep the right people? Or I don't want to lose out on business opportunities because of my experience modification. What can I do? Well, their questions inspired me to write my book called Accidents Waiting to Happen which led to talks to audiences of hundreds of people and to the development of risk score, an assessment you can complete in 10 minutes in the privacy of your office, no cost or obligation. Risk score generates a roadmap that shows people how to reduce risk and increase profitability tailored to their company. It exposes operational blind spots and vulnerabilities. But by focusing on process rather than on an insurance policy, in their first year, my clients see on average a 62% fall in workers' comp claims, a 20% drop in the total cost of those claims, and a 29% decline in employee turnover. And in subsequent years, improvements continue. My dad always said there's more to life than business, and I see it that way too. As an involved family man, I engage in my community by dedicating time and money to groups like Ann's Angels who provides free water ski adventures for people with disabilities, from children to wounded warriors. It all comes back one way or the other. Now, some people would rather have a root canal than face another annual insurance review. We do things differently. Our approach makes it simpler. It's directly related to your key business goals. That's how my clients know I've got their back.